I'm going to talk a little bit about um, cutting aluminum on a CNC router and maybe some of the challenges that you have to overcome. So first of all, it's, it's very nice to be able to uh, cut through aluminum because it's much stronger material than wood and it uh, kind of expands the range of the projects that you can build. And on a router table, you can cut very large pieces, much bigger than you can cut on a mill, uh, most mills. So um, it's a kind of a good goal to, to try to do, but there are challenges because it's, a, even though aluminum is one of the softer metals, uh, routers are, are made more for wood and the spindle is designed to spin much, much, much faster than what you normally cut metal with. This guy spins probably in the range of 10 to 20,000 RPM um, and on a real, real low setting, if you do have a speed controller, you might be able to take it down to five. But the problem with um, taking the speed down is that unlike a regular mill, this guy will just, in order to reduce the speed, it reduces the power that's delivered to the motor. And so that means a low speed has less power than a high speed. And actually, as soon as you start cutting at a low speed, um, sometimes uh, it'll just completely give out. It'll stop. It won't have enough power to even cut the metal. So you have to keep the RPMs high enough that the momentum of the motor um, keeps it spinning. Because obviously, as soon as your tool stops moving, you risk breaking it. So you have to keep your RPMs higher, and one of the ways that you can safely do that is by buying an end mill that has a, a lower tooth count or fewer flutes. This is a two flute end mill. You can also get one flute end mills, I've not experimented with them. But this will actually uh, work better than a four flute end mill because um, it, uh, it's almost as if you were running the tool slower because it has less teeth, in a, in a way. Um, the other thing you can do is use a carbide end mill instead of high speed steel. Now a carbide end mill um, works better, be well for some reason it's just a property of carbide. Carbide, generally you run it at twice the speed of high speed steel, um, but of course carbide is a little more costly. Uh, I think that this tool right here cost around $30, and that's a quarter inch two flute carbide. The other thing that might make a difference is the coating that you have on your end mill. Um, the, the two common coatings are titanium nitride, which is the gold-ish color that comes on a lot of drill bits, and the other is titanium aluminum nitride, which is this darker color almost a, a gray, uh, and ironically, it's the it's supposed to work well on every material except aluminum, and I'm using it on aluminum, but to be honest, like, it's it's been working okay, so uh, probably titanium nitride might be better, but it must not be that big of a deal. Um, so, all right, so then the next thing is you're gonna have, this, this might have to do a little bit with your own machine, but you have to figure out how fast, uh, how, how fast you can feed the tool and also how deep you can make each pass. Obviously, if you're cutting half inch, you're not gonna be able to cut the entire profile, the shape in one pass. Uh, in fact, I'm probably gonna cut this guy in 10 or 15 passes. I'm only going a little bit less than a sixteenth of an inch each. In fact, it's um, 0 0.04 inches. And that's just a number that I've uh, experimented with. If you cut too deep, you'll hear the tool struggle a lot. The uh, RPM will drop as the spindle uh, is unable to keep up. Um, the other thing, the other number that you want to tweak is the feed rate which is how fast you move the tool when you're cutting. I cut around eight to 10 inches per minute. You could probably cut faster than that um, just fine, but this machine has, this for some reason, the stepper motors on my machine 
don't like to move much faster than uh, 10 inches per minute, which I guess I'm okay with. They s basically, if you move any faster than that, then they start skipping steps and they lose a lot of power. Um, and it's very important that your motors don't skip steps. They have to maintain position. So the, uh, yeah, those, those are probably the two biggest um, things to watch out for. I would strongly recommend against using end mills smaller than a quarter inch. When I first started, I used eighth inch end mills and I snapped like 10 of them <laughs> because they just, um, they break so easily, especially whenever you are trying to cut a harder material. Um, the nice thing about this setup right now is that this machine is not physically capable of snapping my quarter inch end mill. So if I do do something stupid like run my tool right into the fixture bolt or I take a pass that's too deep, uh, it will just stall the machine, uh, which is nice because even though I might scrap my, my workpiece, I won't damage the machine or the expensive tool. Some people I know may have a preference for using 3D printers to prototype their, their projects, but I actually think that the two work in, in tandem very well. They work together uh, because um, you can 3D print your part first in less time and using less expensive material, and then you can check the fit of everything and make sure that you can slide a half inch piece in here and that the distance between these two holes is correct and that the screw size you want goes through. You know, all, you know, just make sure your fit is okay. And then once you're happy or you've made some adjustments, um, then you can take it to the mill or the uh, router CNC controller. It's called Universal G-Code Sender. It's uh, one of the uh, pretty popular control software for working with a Arduino based or a Gerbil um, CNC machine which I, I have covered up right now because of all the aluminum chips. You have to make sure that, uh, well, <laughs> I don't have a very good enclosure at the moment, um, but if aluminum chips do fall onto the electronics, it's a conductive material and it could short things out and damage your controllers. This universal G-code sender is what you use to send the G-code to the machine, but to actually make the G-code, um, I use a program called FreeCAD, which is an open source. I think it is designed in maybe Python. I don't know, but um, it's, I'm not gonna say it's the equivalent of SolidWorks, but that's like its purpose is to do 3D modeling. But it actually can do some things that SolidWorks can't do. And one of those is generating tool paths for a CNC machine. Uh, this is a recent feature that they added and uh, for a while it wasn't very useful as they're working out the bugs but now they've pretty much got all the tools that you need um, to go start to finish. Aluminum has gotten a little bit warm as the uh, slots get deeper and mill starts rubbing on the sides and uh, I just let it get to a point where it's outside of the stock. I pause the program and uh, just turn the end mill off and in a second here I'll give it another go and I'll keep While going. While it's paused is the perfect time to get all the chips out of the path of the tool. Alright, so the CNC portion of uh, these parts is done. We can now use a, a drill bit because the CNC kind of peck drilled there. And we'll have to cut these little bits out, but um, they look pretty nice.